We're back at Supercomputing 22 in Dallas, winding down day four of this conference. I'm Paul Gillen, my co-host, Dave Nicholson. We are talking, we've been talking supercomputing all week, and you hear a lot about what's going on in the United States, what's going on in China, Japan. What we haven't talked a lot about is what's going on in Europe. And did you know that two of the top five supercomputers in the world are actually from European countries? Well, our guest uh, has a lot to do with that. Florian Berish, I hope I pronounced that correctly, my German is German's not my strength, <laughs> is uh, the operations director for Prace AISBL. And um, let's start with that. What is Prace? So, uh, hello, and thank you for the invitation. I'm Florian, and Prace is a partnership for advanced computing in Europe. It's a non-profit association uh, with a seat in uh, Brussels in Belgium. And we have uh, 24 members. These are representatives from different European countries uh, dealing with high-performance computing in, at their place. And uh, we, um, so far, we provided uh, the resources for our European research communities, but this uh, changed in the last year with Oro HPC joint undertaking who put uh, a lot of funding in high performance computing and uh, co-funded uh, five uh, petascale and uh, three pre-exascale systems. And uh, two of the pre-exascale systems you mentioned already, this is uh, Lumi in Finland and Leonardo in uh, Bologna in Italy. Who are in the place four and uh, three and four at the top 500 list. So why is it important that Europe be in the top list of supercomputer makers? I think uh, Europe needs to uh, keep pace with the rest of the world and uh, simulation science is uh, a key technology for uh, the society. And we saw this uh, um, very recently with the pandemic, with the COVID, uh, we were able to help the research communities uh, to find very quickly vaccines and to understand how the virus spread around uh, the world. And uh, all this uh, knowledge uh, is uh, important to serve the society. Or another example is uh, climate change. Yeah? With uh, these uh, new systems, we will be able to predict uh, uh, more precise uh, the changes in the future. So the more compute power you have, the better, uh, y the smaller the grid and the res resolution you can choose and the lower the error will be for the future. So these are, I think, with uh, these uh, systems, uh, the big or challenges we face can be addressed. This is uh, the climate change, energy, food supply, security. Uh, who are your members? Or do they come from businesses? Uh, do they come no. from research, from government, mm. all of the above? Yeah, our, our members are public organization, universities, uh, research centers, compute sites, as a data centers, but, but uh, public institutions, yeah. And we uh, provide these services for free via a peer review process. Uh, with uh, excellence as the most important criteria to the research community for free. So, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. when, uh, when the idea of an EU, and maybe I'm getting the dates a little bit wrong, mm -hmm. when it was just an idea, mm -hmm. and the idea of a common currency, yes. um, reducing friction betre between borders to create a trading zone, yes. there was a lot of focus there, Fast forward to today, would you say that these efforts in supercomputing, would they be possible if there were not an EU superstructure? No. I would say this uh, would not be possible in this extent. I think uh, when, uh, though, but though European initiatives are, are needed and uh, the European Commission is supporting these initiatives uh, uh, very well, and uh, before praise, for instance, 2008, there were 
research centers and data centers operating high performance computing systems but they were not talking to each other so it was an uh, isolated place uh, created um, a community of uh, these uh, operation sites and uh, facilitated the exchange between them and uh, also enabled to align investments and to to get the most out of the available funding and also at this time and still today for one single country in Europe it's uh, very hard to provide all the different architectures needed for all the different kind of research communities and applications if you want to to offer always the latest technologies so this is really hardly possible so with this uh, joint action and opening the resources for other research groups from other countries you we were, we were able to yeah, get access to the latest technology for different communities at any given time so and so so the fact that the two systems that you mentioned are physically located in Finland and in Italy mm. um, if you were to walk into one of those facilities and meet the people mm. that, that are there, um, they're not just Finns in Finland and Italians in Italy. Yeah, this is this is very much a European effort. So this this is true. So so in this in, in that sense, the geography is sort of abstracted. Yeah, and the issues of sovereignty that may, might take place in in the private sector mm. don't exist, or are there? Are there issues with, uh, can any, what are the requirements for a researcher to have access to a system in Finland versus a system in Italy? If you've got an EU passport, mm. are you good to go? <laughs> I think you're good to go though, uh, but um, <laughs> EU passport, uh, it's, now it becomes complicated and political. Um, it's, uh, it's very much, if we talk about the recent systems, uh, well, first let me start at PRAISE. PRAISE was inclusive and there was no any constraints as even uh, we had users from US, Australia. We wanted just to support excellence in science and we did not uh, look at the nationality of the organization of the PI and, and so on. There were quotas, but uh, these quotas were very uh, generously uh, interpreted. So, and if so, now with our HPC joint undertaking, uh, it's a question uh, from what uh, European funds these uh, systems were uh, procured, and if a country, European country, are associated to this uh, funding the researchers also have access to these uh, systems. Um, and this addresses uh, basically UK and, and Switzerland, which uh, um, uh, are not uh, um, in the European uh, Union, but uh, they were associated to the Horizon 2020 research uh, framework, and though they could can access the systems now available, Lumi and uh, Leonardo and the Petascale system as well. How this will develop in the future, I don't know. It depends to which uh, research um, framework they will be associated or not. What are the outputs of your work at PRACE? Are they reference designs? Is it actual semiconductor hardware? Uh, is it research? What do you produce? So, uh, the the application we run or the simulation we run cover uh, all different uh, scientific uh, domains. So it's it's science. Uh, it's uh, uh, but also we have industrial uh, led projects with more application oriented uh, targets. Uh, aerodynamics, for instance, for uh, cars or planes or something uh, like this, but. Uh, also fundamental science like uh, the um, uh, physical uh, um, elementary physics uh, particles for instance or climate change biology um, um, drug design protein crystallography all, all these things can businesses be involved in what you do can they 
purchase your your, your research? Mm. Uh, do they contribute to their? I'm sure I'm sure there are many technology firms in Europe that would like yeah. to be involved. So with uh, involving industry, so our calls are open, and uh, is if they want to do open R&D, they are invited to submit also proposals that will be evaluated and uh, if this uh, is uh, qualifying, they will get the access and they can do their jobs and simulations. Um, it's a little bit more tricky if it's in production, if they use these resources uh, for uh, their business and uh, do not uh, uh, publish the results, there are some, well, probably more sites who, who are able to deal with these requests. Some are more dominant than others, um, but this is on a smaller scale, definitely, yeah. What does the future hold? Are you planning to, uh, are, are there other countries who will be joining the effort, other institutions? Uh, do you plan to expand your, your scope? Well, Oro, I think Oro HPC joint undertaking with uh, 36 uh, member states is quite, <laughs> covers already <Okay. laughs> even more than Europe. And uh, um, yeah, clearly, if, if there are other um, states interested uh, to join, the, there is uh, no limitation. Um, also, the focus lies uh, on the European um, area and uh, union. Mm. When, when you interact with colleagues from North America, mm. do, you, do you feel that there is a sort of uh, European flavor to supercomputing that is different or are we so no. globally entwined? Um, no, so research is not national, it's not European, it's international. This is also clearly very clear and uh, I can you so we have a, a long-standing collaboration with our US colleagues and also with Japan and South Africa and Canada and uh, when uh, COVID hit uh, the world uh, we were able within two weeks to establish regular seminars uh, inviting uh, US and uh, European uh, colleagues to talk to to other to each other and exchange the results and find new collaboration and to boost the research activities so and I have other examples as well so when we, we already did the joint calls uh, US exceed and uh, in Europe praise and it was a very um, interesting um, experience so we received applications from different uh, communities and we decided that we will review this on our side on European with European experts and US did it uh, uh, in US with their experts and you can guess what the result was at the meeting when we compared our results it was matching one by one mm -hmm. it was exactly the same result that it, it, it's it's refreshing to hear mm a story of global collaboration, yeah. where people are getting along and making meaningful progress. I have to mention, you, I have to, to point out, you did not mention China as yes. a country you're collaborating with. Is, yes. that by, is that intentional? Uh, <laughs> well, um, with China, definitely we have less uh, links and uh, collaborations. Uh, the, also, it's also existing. Uh, there, there was an uh, initiative uh, to uh, look at uh, the development of uh, the technologies and so a group uh, meet uh, uh, on a regular basis and there were also Chinese colleagues involved. Mm. But it's on a lower level, yes. But it is, it's the con conversations are occurring. Uh, we're out of time, Florian Beberich. Operations Director of PRACE, European Supercomputing Collaborative. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm always impressed when people come on theCUBE and can submit to an interview in a language that is not their first language. Yeah, and absolutely. You're so brave to do that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back uh, after this break from Supercomputing 22 in Dallas. <laughs>